I was scrolling around the internet and I came across this FC09 uh, website and it was talking about uh, somebody was asking if a bike was worth fixing and they had quite a few detailed photos on it. And what got me thinking about this as I've been working on content for this uh, MotoSmart laser is this is pretty common what you see is you'll see, you know, where people are asking, is this worth fixing? And there's actually like 19 comments on here. Some of these comments on here are actually really nice. They wrote, you know, well enough. But the reality of it is, is no one commenting here can tell you whether a motorcycle like this that's had this kind of impact is worth fixing. I mean, what this ultimately comes down to is what risk are you willing to take? Even a lot of shops are doing, you know, repairs and then finding out that after a whole front end and a wheel and body work and everything else, that the bike doesn't handle right or, you know, quote unquote, something else is wrong. And I, I know I told a story in part one how I had bought a bike wrong one time just because there was no cracked paint. So I went ahead with it. But I'm going to show you another way. This is, you know, part two of the MotorSmart laser where you can see how you can check for twist in the neck. Super, super awesome that you can literally take this measurement whether you're uh, doing it out of your shop or whether you're a professional shop and you want to have more, uh, you know, more confirmation to give your customer on whether a bike is worth fixing like they're asking here. So let's jump into it and you can see how this tool will work to check the twist in the neck stock of a uh, motorcycle. This is uh, probably the best couple hundred bucks you'd ever spend if you, uh, like I said, wrecked, wrecked a bike, were looking to buy a wrecked bike, or um, your shop charging for these services. Let's get into it. I'm gonna just take a quick video of the, the bike stock and sh look at you know some of the stuff we're working on. But we're gonna go through this uh, center point here. Yeah, it looks like we might have to take the handlebars off. Yes, but we have to remove because the bike cannot hold that up there. Get on it straight. No, we have to remove it. Yep. Okay, he's starting to make some progress here. Obviously, you gotta get you know the handlebars clear, but he's going through the center of the bike here. And I use cones on both sides here. Okay, you can see it up there. Well, let's look at the front setup here that we already have here. So we have the shaft through the triple tree, as you can see here, and then the scale is sideways. Well, one point he made is obviously don't just try and you know throw these in here. One of the things you want to do is get under here and make sure that there's not a weld across there that's not going to allow you to center that up. So this is. This is not going to work on every model in the world, but in this case here where it was, you know, machined through on both sides, we had two good surfaces to be able to get cones on, and then we so have our scale. You only have to see the table or measurement plate. It must okay. be an angle. He's, he's actually showing me what kind of detail goes in this when they manufacture. So these nuts that you could thread on if you didn't have a hole through, they literally surface grind those on this little lathe setup, so it's specific, but let's look at the finish up close on it. Go ahead and take that off. Like, actually, you see how this is, oh yeah, you can see it. Let me get closer with the camera. You can actually see how that's surface ground. So if you drop it, you don't use any more. So you're being incredibly specific. And now you're actually just, we're having to use that. Thank goodness, it's kind of cool to use the accessories. He was making a point that we take the nut off you also want to look at the condition of the, the washer that it's going to go up against. Because if it were scarred from like a lock washer or something as well. Some dust, mad, something like that. Okay, I'm bringing Okay. You tie it with about 50 newton meters or something like that. Not totally, but you have to tie. Okay. Say, say that one more time again, uh, Chaba. I wasn't recording, so what were you saying about the welded frame and the jig? So this uh, frame is welded, so it's mean the base points, it's fitting in the welding jig, then the welding is coming, mm -hmm. and if you lose the parts from the jig, it's a little bit moving. Right. So for that reason, uh, for the correct measurements, it's you have to be tightened about 50 newton meters or something like that. Whatever the torque spec, yeah, really is, yeah, gotcha. Can you see the other side is rotating? 
what Chab was trying to do here, just using a wrench just so he can slowly tighten it up. And we were hoping to capture on the video that you could actually see the frame like compressing and, and closing up on that gap as he tightened it uh, real evenly with a wrench. But best use a torque wrench and look up the spec needed in your service manual. Once I measured one motorcycle, and both wheel was about 0 0.4, it's impossible. Right. <laughs> Again, and tightened it in 0 0.3. 0 yeah. So matching that back to, you know, knowing that you have to have torque specs uh, makes sense. So what he's talking about basically is the, the frame, you know, as you torque that down, compressing a little bit. There's a couple different reasons they do that. Sometimes it's built in if that tuned suspension, they say, or tuned uh, frame and engine mounts. And then, uh, you know, that little gap too is really nice for installation when you're installing a swing arm and engine. So Also important things, this part is manufactured by tightening the thickness. So you have to a little bit tight the plastic screws to make it for this position. Okay. We want that rigid. So you see, about eight. Eight? eight. Okay. Eight. Then, we have to remove the plate. To the top. Well, it's so simple. Dang, that's fast. I suppose if someone wanted to, if they're a high volume shop, they could buy a second one of these from you and then yes. just have two of them. It's about 10 and uh, two divisions, which means 0 0.2, but it is written in the manual. So up to five, it's, it's okay. So it's acceptable. So up to five and this one's only at yes. two. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So that is very simple and very important and useful check. So the frame is okay. You are able to measurement frame even in the table. So you don't need to have a motorcycle completely. So if you are going to buy a frame itself, mm -hmm. you can control it. Yeah, that's awesome. So yeah, I never even thought about that. I mean, you literally could check a frame itself, especially then you'd need the bigger cones, right? Yes. Yeah, you need those accessories yes, like this. Yes, and then, man, I didn't even thing. think of that. You literally could just check the frame. Yes. Wow, that's fantastic. That is super cool. Hey, let's hit the brakes here for a second. You know, it's hard in a 10 minute video to make you an expert on every possible scenario or situation uh, that you could come across, you know, when inspecting frames. But one point I want to make is when we just were talking about how you could check a frame up on, uh, you know, on the bench without the motor and without being in uh, a fully assembled motorcycle. One thing I keep in mind is that just like we said earlier, some of these frames are a stress member. So, you know, if you're buying a frame from a, you know, custom welder and you wanted to check it out or whatnot, uh, or you're running over to eBay and picking something up, um, I'd recommend that you uh, put some spacers in a, uh, uh, you know, a, a bolt through that, you know, swing our mounting point and then torque it to spec so that you could add that stress. Well, the challenge is going to be though, is, you know, how much is the frame supposed to flex and how much should it move? So some of those things are going to be some trial and error, but it's pretty cool that you have some options and a way to uh, take some measurements. Look at this setup one more time. Like I said, get an idea in case you get one of these for yourself, you'll be able to see what all these accessories are. And uh, Chaba, one thing I've noticed about you is like you're always continuously improving. Like you're you're always like, oh, let's tweak this, let's tweak that, you know, because this this laser is different than the one that I originally got. And the one that you you know I originally got, you had to supply power and a cord and a USB, and it didn't bother me. Yes. But you you made this one where it has its own batteries, and then you don't even need. Uh, you don't even need to plug it in, which just made it yes, that much, much quicker. Simpler, yeah, so that was the reason. So, you know, I'm an engineer, so I always think, you know, technical things. Right. But another point you made on this new one, because 
you know, you know what people do, like things work really well. And then us humans touch things and we cause problems. Right. <laughs> and so one of, the, one of the things we, we see right here is on this new one where he uses just a very simple laser. The batteries are able to be changed from the bottom side. You can see the two bolts where this is sandwiched in here. Well, this is adjustable because he calibrates it on this magic little tool over here. You can see his calibration tool where he sets it up on here, puts the laser, puts the scale. And so don't mess with these, okay? If you did, if you, you know, loosened it or caused a problem, you would need to send it uh, back in for calibration. But this is how you're uh, making it good to go. You can see he actually has a, a mirror on here on this side. He's going to go ahead and, uh, you know, just show quickly how, you know, he's, he's making sure that it has the ability. I saw it on there. Okay, so we have to ride back to the uh, emitting point. Yep. Awesome. Way cool. Way cool. Hey fans, you've seen it before. One of the reasons to join and subscribe to the How to Wrench channel, PropTech is doing it again. Just like their other uh, tool videos we did on the introduction of this, they're doing a 10% off coupon. you find the discount link below. Hit them up on uh, these uh, links and get one of these tools for yourself.